here. There we go. All right. So, hi everyone. Welcome, and thank you all for being here and taking the time. Uh, hopefully, we can give you a lot of good tips and insights on to CAD and what exactly is CAD. So this will be a really good fundamental introduction. If the, if there's a lot of you who have heard it, maybe seen it a little bit, um, but you're really just curious on wh what exactly is it and how can I just know what it's about? But yeah, first we would like to take a moment. We do this in all of our workshops and events. We like to take a moment, just to acknowledge that UCC is occupying indigenous lands, more specifically um, to the Kumeyaay. So if we could please take a couple of seconds in silence to do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, thank you so much for taking that moment with us. And just to let you all know, this workshop will be recorded and posted at a later date. So if you do have to leave early, no worries. It will be available for everyone. Um, and for people who didn't show up, they will also have this resource. So, all right, let's get started. So the biggest question, what is CAD? <laughs> you hear it, you see it a lot. Where can I get started? So let's just start by defining what it is. It's computer assisted design. And this is used in almost a lot of engineering fields, all of them, uh, even non-engineering fields, you will see this used for designing. And it's basically just a really powerful tool for not only designing, but also doing analysis on your models, making models, um, making your models more refined and optimized, like what kind of materials you wanna use, what kind of parts of your structure are actually really secure and stable, what will uphold under various forces and various conditions. So then from there, you can just keep prototyping and making your design better. And you don't necessarily have to spend or waste money and time on prototyping in real life to do this. So that's a really great, um, it's a really great tool for that. And the biggest thing is that it's computer assisted. So while the computer is helping you, like, you know, we draw on paper, you can, it's hard to draw a straight line. It's hard to draw a circle. So that's why we have the computer help you do these kinds of things. It saves us a lot of time and energy, but don't forget that it needs you, the human experience. Like you got to have some good foundation on your design. You really want to make sure that before you go into CAD, you know, you're, you have an idea of what you want. You have a sketch of it. You have the conception and really the computer aided design helps you bring that to life and give you the firsthand visual of it in a really formal and uh, precise way. But yeah. So moving on. So how exactly can I CAD? Where do I get started? How do I get a computer to help me design stuff? Uh, two biggest ones that a lot of people use are SolidWorks and Fusion 360. These are two really popular designs. Um, you can find them online. Uh, for example, SolidWorks, you have to download it and install it. However, Fusion is online to use. And I believe Fusion is free. So SolidWorks is reduced or free for students. I got it for free. So definitely don't pay for it. You don't have to. Just try to find a key or code from the school. And they have that. Um, we'll talk about that more at the end of where we have a resources slide. But yeah, also, if you don't have a uh, Let's say your computer, I was just talking to a teammate um, for my senior design. He has a seven-year-old computer. <laughs> it cannot uphold 3D graphics to say the least. So definitely there are computers on school campus that have CAD. So definitely feel free to check those out. Lots of basements and even computers at the library should be able to handle CAD and they have it ready to go. Yeah, usually you can find access to these things pretty easily. And even if you're a MacBook user, uh, Fusion 360 should run. Um, so we're going to be doing most of this uh, presentation today in SolidWorks, which um, <clears throat> there are some good resources online about figuring out how to use a lot of SolidWorks. So that's why we've chosen it today. It's pretty simple, but most of these CAD programs, if you learn one thing in one of them, you can usually translate that knowledge to another one pretty readily. They use most of the same terminology and pretty much look the same. So um, any process that we talk about today, you'll probably be able to do in Fusion 360 or Onshape or any other program, even though we're talking specifically about SolidWorks today. So in some of these slides, I've included a screenshot here of a SolidWorks uh, development window so that you know what to look for. And that way, what I'm talking about doesn't seem very abstract. Um, but the first step when you open a CAD package, uh, specifically SolidWorks, is starting your part. So when you go into CAD, like Dafina was saying, you kind of usually have an idea of what you're going to do. You're going to try and make something like 
say you just want to make a cube, then you know you're going to have to go in there and, and try and make a cube. So the first thing you got to do is, is make this par in CAD. And the way you do that is just by opening the CAD package. It'll give you this window as soon as you boot it up. So it won't be hard to start off. And you're just going to look for on that left side, this little thing that says part. You're going to click on it. And um, if this doesn't show up, then you can click on the little house in the top left and it'll bring you right to this window. And that's all you need to do. So once you click on that part, it'll open a separate window where you can get started and actually making it. Um, but if you maybe have a more complicated idea of something you want to do, it's important to understand that let's say you have like a moving mechanism you want to do that, that consists of two pieces, then you'll probably want to make each of those pieces individually of each other and then use separate functions to assemble them. So everything kind of starts with a part. Even a very complicated design will start by just making constituent parts. So pretty much everything you do on here, you'll start by clicking on this part button. Um, the next most important thing is learning how to look around in the CAD package. Uh, as soon as you hit the part button, it'll bring you to a development or, or to a window where you have some axes and some buttons available to you. And as soon as this window opens, you can move these axes around and start looking at whatever you make from different angles. And this can usually be a little bit disorienting to someone who's new to the software. Uh, and the most important tip I can give you is to have a mouse. If you are trying to CAD something on a trackpad, it's going to be virtually impossible because there's just a lot of buttons and there's a lot of different ways you can change your view of the object you're working on. And almost all of them uh, require mouse keys. So doing it with the trackpad, you'll find yourself like not able to zoom in or rotate and it might be kind of confusing. So just grab a mouse, like if you can see my uh, picture or my uh, video, it's a, any three button mouse will work. You'll want one that has like, you know, the left and the right click. And then one that has a little scroll wheel in the middle. The scroll wheel will actually be a pretty helpful. So you don't want to skip that part. Some mouses don't have that or mice don't have that. Um, so the first thing you'll probably want to do with an object is, is move it left or right. Like if you just want to look at a different part of it without rotating it, you're going to just use these controls on the bottom. So you're going to hit the control key and then click on the middle mouse button which is the scroll wheel and just drag around and it'll move the object for you. Rotating an object, it just clicking the middle mouse button and dragging without the control key. And this will rotate about the point that you click on. Uh, and then zooming in and out on your object. Sometimes objects can be very big and have smaller parts on top of them, or you just wanna set you know, small elements on a big thing, then you'll probably wanna zoom in and out and uh, you'll do that with, the scroll wheel on your mouse and you'll um, point with the mouse clicker and wherever you point is where it's going to zoom in and out from. Um, so again, you know, it's kind of another reason to have a mouse is it makes it a lot easier to move the cursor around. Sometimes if you do too much zooming, you can zoom out so far that you don't see your part or you can zoom in so far that the part goes out of view. Uh, and that caused me a lot of issues when I was learning CAD because it, sometimes I would just be working and like maybe brush my mouse and the part would disappear. So if you get um, lost, you know, the screen goes white or you're looking at a kind of a blown up view, you just press the F key and it'll bring the part into this nice view here, which I, I have on like a three dimensional part here. It's called isometric. Um, it just brings the part into view so that the whole part is is on the screen none of it's uh, hanging off the screen and so that it's zoomed to a degree where you know it's it's pretty easy to see um and this will work with uh sketch as well which is a, a two-dimensional object um you can zoom more specifically onto certain views of the part if you don't want to mess around with the rotating and the uh, translating and you can do that by pressing on this button here so again i've included a screenshot of the page. This button where the red arrow is pointing that looks like a little cube, this button will let you adjust the field of view. So it'll rotate the object uh, into a certain position based off of what you press. And this is helpful if you just want to look at, say, what the object looks like from the front or from the back or from the top. It'll have all those views. And it's usually pretty self-explanatory. Like if you look at all these cubes, there's one side is filled in. Uh, and that side is the side you're gonna be viewing it from. So if I click the one in the middle, it'll show me the object from the front. Um, not too complicated, but that's gonna be really helpful if you lose your object again, or if you just wanna look at it in a certain way. Or, um, that's just about how you do it. And also you can open this menu up by pressing spacebar instead of finding that button, which is nice. Um, so 
you're to actually look around and find aspects of a sketch, you have to have a sketch down on the plane and there won't be one there for you if you just open a new sketch. Um, so after you've opened a sketch with those buttons we mentioned before, you are gonna wanna start making something two dimensional. So pretty much all CAD designs, whatever you're gonna make, you're probably gonna want it to be 3D at some point. Um, and the trick is getting it to be 3D by starting with the 2D drawing. So most things that are three dimensional start by um, somehow expanding a, a two dimensional drawing. So, and this is called a sketch. And to open your first sketch, you're just gonna go to this first window and hit the top left button that says sketch there. And it'll bring you these three planes which are shown in the middle of the screenshot. You see how it says front, right? And uh, it kind of hit, I think that says, it should say bottom or left or top or whatever, but it'll show you those planes. You're just gonna click on one of them and it'll start your sketch in that plane, which just means you can start putting elements down onto it. And it usually doesn't matter which plane you choose because um, you can always rotate it later. Then to actually start your sketch, once you've selected your plane, you can use these buttons in the top left uh, within the red square and put down some two dimensional shapes. So they have, with all these combinations of, of objects, you can make pretty much any shape ever. Um, as you can see, there's like, a line, a circle, some sort of spline, which is basically just a squiggle, um, a square, arcs, all kinds of things like that, ellipses, polygons. You can make pretty much every shape with any combination of these tools. And um, that's kind of the trick of CAD is if you believe that you can make it, you can definitely make it. There's usually infinite number of ways that you can make any one object. So just knowing all the tools so that you have uh, a good understanding of, of how to get there. This is, you know, the first step is choosing your two-dimensional shape. So if you want to make a cube, you're going to start with a square, which is going to be this little rectangle tool here. Uh, and if you want to make, say, a tube, then you'd start with a circle. Um, that's really about all there is to it in making those two-dimensional shapes. So you choose them from that menu, and then you basically start clicking and dragging points out. Here we've created a uh, rectangle by, by assembling a number of different lines. Uh, and you could make a rectangle by just choosing a rectangle tool. That's just an example of what I mean. You can usually do things in a couple of different ways. Um, dimensioning is a really important part of CAD because Although some people just want to make virtual objects, like if you're making animations or you just want to see what something would look like without making it, usually the purpose of CAD is to imitate or simulate real life objects with a computer. Um, even maybe if you're going to 3D print something or just do some like stress and strain analysis of a certain shape, you it's important to know how big it is. The geometry of these things does matter. So dimensioning is the tool where you set the lengths um, and angles of lines in your sketch. So you do this just by pressing the smart dimension button here and then selecting whatever element you wanna set the length of. So that usually just means clicking smart dimension and then clicking on a line and it'll open up a little box for you. Um, as you can see, it's on the bottom left of the screenshot where it says parameters. It'll open a little box for you to input your own values. And here, um, it actually doesn't say millimeters, but this, this is working in millimeters is 75 millimeter line and at 300 degrees um, from the other line. So those are the two parameters we've set with the dimensioning tool here. Constraints are a little bit different from dimensions in that they usually talk about geometric relations instead of just lengths and angles. Um, so an example of a constraint to kind of clarify that definition is, parallel or perpendicular, things like that just tell you how two different objects in your sketch should be related without putting specific numbers to them. Um, of course, you can constrain two things to be related in a specific way, but the general idea of constraint is something uh, you want fixed in your sketch. So if you are gonna change things later on, like maybe I make a hexagon, and I constrain the length of the sides of the hexagon to be six inches, then if I later wanna just pull one of the corners of this hexagon to make it bigger, it won't let me do that because I've constrained it to be six inches on each side. So constraining things usually fixes it just so that you don't accidentally mess it up later if you plan on doing some like push-pull expanding or just any sort of simple operation that might change the nature of the shape. Um, it's sometimes seems like it's more complicated when I just 
say it out loud. So the best way to figure out what all the constraint options are are just by clicking on the button, which is uh, in this red box here that says display slash uh, delete relations, and um, also just clicking on the objects themselves. It will show you all the constraints that that object is subject to, and you can delete, add, uh, or just alter the constraints that are currently applied to that um, element of your sketch. So function features are things that you can do once you've completed your sketch, and they will allow you basically to make it three-dimensional. So like I said, most people come in with a three-dimensional idea, like a cube or a sphere or something more complicated. And usually that starts by making a two-dimensional object. Um, and it's going to be, it says here, this is located at the top of your screen. It pretty much is in every CAD package. And it'll have a whole bunch of crazy tools for you to modify um, a, a 3D shape to make it look like what you want it to. And a lot of these look pretty confusing when you start and just like look at all the options here. Like maybe you just don't even know what a lofted cut is or a swept cut. Uh, I don't either, you know, like that's kind of the fun part. There's tools for a lot of specific things here. And the best thing you can do is click on them and kind of play around and see. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna talk about, which is really basic is extrusions. Um, extruding a part is just taking your two dimensional sketch and pulling it so that it just goes upward. So every cross section of the three dimensional shape is gonna be equal to your sketch. So if you have drawn a square and you extrude it, it's gonna become a cube or it's gonna become a rectangular prism. You can uh, draw it out to any height you want. So if you have a circle and you pull it out, it's gonna become a cylinder. It won't become a sphere, if you kind of understand what I'm saying. If whatever your shape is, if you extrude it, it's just gonna give that shape height. It's not gonna change anything through that height. It's gonna be a constant shape throughout its whole height. Um, the way you do extrude is you just click on the extruded boss slash base button here. Uh, which is going to be on the top of your screen. We didn't include like the comprehensive screenshot. And then it's going to open this little box, which they call a dialog box. And you can set the constraints of your extrusion, which is usually the type of extrusion and then the distance, how far you want it to be extruded off of the surface. So it's pretty simple. Um, you also want to choose your direction because it'll usually default to doing it in a, in a, in a direction that may not be the one you were planning on doing. Um, so you do direction one here, you choose the direction of the extrusion in this dialog box here where it says direction one, and then there's this like blue and black arrow. If you click on that, it'll just make extrude it to the other side if by chance you hit extrude it and it does it on the wrong side. So pretty easy to fix that problem. Um, this blind button is also really helpful. It's going to help more to just play around with this once you get your CAD package installed. But you can also extrude things so that uh, they extrude to certain heights, uh, so that they extrude to other objects if you have other objects in your sketch, and um, kind of useful functions like that. But for now, we'll just do blind, which means it just extrudes up to whatever height you say. And then revolved boss slash base is a type of extrusion, but it's special in that it extrudes your surface out so that every cross section is still a copy of your original shape, but it does uh, an extrusion and a rotation simultaneously. So it kind of like pulls it around a circle. Um, this is helpful if you wanna make things that are you know circular, rings or, or anything like that that are three-dimensional. Um, so for this one, if you were choosing just a height last time, now you have to choose a height and a center line to rotate the object about. And usually this, that when you select um, revolved boss slash base, it'll open, sorry, I keep clicking on the screen. It'll open another dialog box, um, which is in the middle of the screen here. And it'll look similar to the extrude one, but it'll have some extra options. And, and notably, you're just gonna have to choose that axis of rotation like last time, but you'll also have to um, input the height and similar features like that to get it to look exactly like what you want. Um, it says here, instead of defining, I, this might be um, uh, SolidWorks specific, um, but it says in SolidWorks, instead of defining height, you define the degree of rotation, which makes more sense to me. Uh, so instead of saying, I want this to be extruded so that it's 30 centimeters long, you say, I want it extruded maybe 270 degrees instead of 360. So instead of it being a ring, I want it to be, you know, three quarters of a ring. 
uh, which that actually makes a lot more sense. <laughs> um, so the slight difference between uh, that function and the sweep function is that if you don't want it to go in a perfect circle, but you still want um, to extrude an object in some sort of like non-straight shape, like this one here, you have kind of like a pipe object, you're, you're going to have to sweep it across a path. So um, extrude, we'll extrude it straight. The other one will rotate it uh, in a circle. And this one sweep will bring it along a path that you define. So this path here is um, it's just drawn with, with lines. And then when you do sweep, it'll bring the object to follow these lines so that the center of the object is, is always along that line there. So that's probably the most useful of the extrude functions, especially if you're dealing with things like pipes, um, makes it really easy to, to sketch them out. Um, I can't remember if I, do you want me to do cut, Dafina? I can't remember, yeah, okay, I can't remember I said I was gonna stop, but cut is basically just another type of extrude. It's just a negative, you think of it like a negative extrude. So if you have an object that like say you make a hexagon and you extrude it upwards here, like we have on this nut, and you want the nut to have like a little bit of a um, angled sides here, so it's not sharp edges, you can use the cut feature. Uh, and all these features, like this is kind of a complicated cut as an example, but you can also just remove the top of your extrusion with the cut. It's just think of a cut as a negative extrusion and you know that'll keep it digestible. Um, fillet is a great feature for three-dimensional shapes because it turns sharp edges into rounded ones. And sharp edges usually aren't good. Uh, if you're going to 3D print something or if you're using this to model like a real life scenario, anyone who's a mechanical engineer, or I mean, probably anyone here who is an engineer has heard or learned about solid mechanics, or at least the basics of it. And just the essence is that sharp edges usually concentrate stress. So if you're going to like stand on this cube, say, it's going to be a lot weaker on the sharp edges than it would be in the middle. So an easy way to eliminate that problem is to just eliminate the sharp edges. And so pretty much anything that looks really sharp in one of your designs, you'll probably be interested in, in filleting it. And that just means um, inserting a radius here, which is on the left. Uh, it says 10 millimeters here. So this person is filleting the edge of this cube so that it has a semicircular, or I guess a, a quarter circle instead of two straight lines and the radius of that circle will be 10 millimeters. So that's all there is to it. That just removes a sharp edge. Uh, and it says here, you do that by choosing an edge and then choosing the radius. That's all you have to do. Pretty simple. Uh, chamfer is a little bit different in that it, it removes an edge, but it doesn't give it any roundness. It just kind of like slices it off. Um, so the slope of the surface, it just means you're just gonna have to define it differently, but just like fill it, this is just another button that's accessible to you in, in your like 3D functions box. So if you select chamfer and then you select an edge, it'll give you a little dialog box and you can input all the specific um, information that you need, the constraints that you need to set this up properly, which is usually just an angle and then the distance you wanna do it for. So it ends up looking just like what you want when you're done, just two pretty simple commands. Um, patterning is useful especially when you're dealing with circular things or like you want to put fins on a rocket or holes in a gasket. If you have multiple different objects that you want to repeat, circular patterning can pattern anything. So this person here is intending to pattern a cut across this like washer shaped object. So to do this, you have to first make one cut or one extrusion. And then once that object is created, you can select it and hit the circular pattern button and what that pattern button will do uh, is once you select your axis of patterning, it'll take that object and it'll make multiple copies of it around the axis that you chose. Uh, and then all you have to input is the spacing, how far away they are from each other and how many instances of that object you want. So in this case, this person made a cut, uh, a cylindrical cut out of this washer, and then they patterned it six times uh, with a spacing of 60 degrees. So they just, uh, once they execute this patterning function, it's going to uh, place a cut in all these places where it's currently solid. So you can also do this, we can do the opposite, like say if we wanted a little cylinder to be sitting on top of this gasket, then we would just make that cylinder uh, 
and then pattern it the same way. So you can pattern cuts as well as you can pattern three-dimensional surfaces. Um, all right, yeah, so we're gonna start with an example that's pretty simple about how to make a screw and Dafina is gonna walk us through this in an actual CAD package. So you can see how some of this stuff works. Yeah, and in the slide, I just have some basic uh, screenshots of the general steps that you would take. And if this seems overwhelming at first, don't worry, you'll get, you'll eventually build like a common sense kind of like approach how to start and how to get to the final product just by looking at your final product, uh, which would be on the left. And usually classes, they will give you multiple image like images like this where they dimension or label um, how the measurements of everything so that you have a good basis to go off of to get the proper amounts and sizing. Um, but yeah, this is inspired by, well, this is more like directly inspired by my MAE 50 class, which is a CAD class. So this is just a little good insight to what you're looking at. And if you want at the end, I can show you more complex homework assignment problems if you want to get some like inspiration of like I don't know what's what's going to happen in the future, but I could go ahead and start screen sharing and we can just dive into it. Okay. <laughs> yes, Clover, <laughs> professor. I am inspired from the professor, but okay. So yeah, I actually ended up changing this and I will show you something really cool at the end that has to do with changing the shape of something and seeing it changed automatically in your final model. But this is overall the look, uh, the inspo. So going to file, you're going to click new. As uh, Quinn went over earlier, you want to go to part since we're making one individual part. Uh, these two are for, as he said earlier, 2D assembly, putting together a bunch of 3D parts. So go here um in the first thing you want to do pick a plane i like front plane i'm biased towards it because i don't know it's in the front easiest uh right click you want to click you can either click new sketch here or you can just start you can just click sketch up here so either one will just get you a new sketch that you're going to be working on and from here uh what i think is really important that i messed up a couple times um, you want to start from this origin. So make sure you hover over this point and it's a really good basis to go off of. And it just makes constraining and getting a good general view of your object a lot easier. So I just like to start from one of these corners. It's like the zero zero on a grid point. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and something that you can do is just, just start sketching the general shape. Um, I know some people like to get the right um, what's it called, the right values and amounts right, right away. But just for our sake, I'll just randomly do it um, just so we can get a good idea of how to change the shapes of things and do constraints as we please. So this is like the general um, idea of what you want. And there's a reason why we're doing half of the sketch and you will see soon, it will be exciting. Um, that was the wrong web browser. Um, I meant to pull up the um, yes, here we go. So what you want to do really is, especially in your homework assignments, you want to keep comparing what you have to what you want to get. So for example, we want to get 2.99 as this long one on the, as the long line on the left. So we can go ahead and set a constraint right away where we want it to be horizontal. So that right away snaps it into shape. And something really important that I mess up on a lot, you, Black means it's defined. You want black lines all the way around. 100% don't finish your sketch until you completely define everything and all the lines are black because then things will not work out later for you and you will have to restart or fix your sketch. Don't put yourself through that misery. I got you. Make all the lines black, defined, fully defined. So we already have these two defined just based off the fact that this is a horizontal line right away. And I made this vertical. So the program's like, okay, this is logical for me. I'm gonna keep going from here. So what you can do from here is, yeah, just keep defining things, uh, adding relationships and constraints. It just kind of makes the computer understand what you're doing more and make it more realistic so that you can work on it later, especially when you make it into a 3D object. So another thing that we can do, um, yeah, you can also make, you wanna select two lines and you can do even more relations like make it perpendicular. And 
So something that Quinn was talking about earlier is getting the angles of things, right? So you wanna select two lines. You can do that by clicking the shift, like pressing the shift button and then clicking the lines that you want. Um, and actually important thing, make sure that um, if you wanna change the, the amounts and shapes of, or I guess the, how long your lines are or the angles, you wanna to go to smart dimension. Smart dimension is a really good way to define your sketch. It's a really important way to do so. So like earlier, we wanted to set this to, what was it? 2.99, 2. right? This is the length that we want. So you go to smart dimension and it, it's really smart. It dimensions it for you, right? So 2.99 inches, I'm in inches. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, you keep consistent units. And there we go, 2.99. And we can go ahead and move on to the next line. Um, 0.9 for the bottom here. So let's go ahead and just do that. There we go. And then we have that this other line is 1.49. Okay, cool. So if you're stuck and you don't know, like I'm just gonna exit smart dimension um, if you don't know how to constrain something or you're having trouble getting it fully defined, which happened to me a lot, you, you can just literally click the line and like try to move it around and just see like what changes. And that gives you a good indication of what constraint you need to do. So this is telling me that it doesn't know when to like, it doesn't know to stay in place. So one thing you can do right off the bat is set an angle. So shift, I'm gonna click this other line. And I believe the angle, what's the angle? 58, so we can do 58. Boom, and it's constrained and it's fully defined. Every, all the lines are black. We like this, this is good. Um, yeah, it pretty much looks the same. These green little buttons, in case you're curious, um, it just tells you what constraints you have. So this like flat, this like straight line, it tells you that these two are perpendicular, they're not perpendicular, they're parallel. <laughs> this is a perpendicular line. When you hover over it, it tells you which lines this relationship is replied uh, in reference to. This one just tells you that it's this point is fixed to the origin. So that's called coincident, like it coincides them together. But so far we have the sketch done and you always remember to exit smart dimension, exit your sketch, and now you're ready for the next step. But does anyone have any questions before we move on? Because this can be a bit overwhelming. So if you're confused, don't even worry about it. Just feel free to ask any questions right now. Yeah, and if not, we'll just keep going and feel free to ask questions at the end too. Okay, so we got our sketch. We got the beginnings of what seems like a screw kind of from one perspective. So what we can do now is make this 3D using a feature mentioned earlier, which is the revolved boss base. And it kind of, if you hover over it, look, it already is showing you what it can do. So we're clicking revolved boss base. The axis of revolution is the axis upon which it will revolve your shape in a 3D space. Oh, see, I already clicked it and right away it just it just swept it, swept this sketch around that axis. And bind, bind is really nice. It just goes 360 and you're good. So I like what I'm seeing. I'm gonna click the check mark. Boom. Wow, we're getting there. We're so close already. Next step is yeah, we want to get this little like, I don't know what it's called on a screw, honestly. I feel like I knew it once and now I don't. The little, the little cross, we wanna get that little cross, right? This will, just a heads up, this can involve some big constraining. So I'm just gonna really emphasize constraints, just, you know, learn them, get comfortable with them, make your sketch defined and you're good to go. Um, you really wanna set up those good relationships. It applies to life in general too. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, so what you wanna do is select the plane upon which you wanna make the sketch, which is, gonna be this one because now it's an actual 3D shape and you can just go ahead. Oh, sorry, that was not it. So what you can do now is click the surface upon which you want to make your sketch, click sketch, and now you're good to go. You can start sketching on this new 
3D surface that you created. So one thing that a lot of people like to do is when you click line or any of these shapes, you can click for construction. And I think this was mentioned earlier where these are like your sketch lines. These are your guidelines. These are your bread to your butter. They help you. They really help you just get a good sense of where things are and where to place things. So I'm just gonna set up two constraints or two constraint lines. Uh, for example, if you don't click the check right away, it's okay. Just click on your line and click the check mark afterwards. It will work. And you can just click horizontal and vertical just to be sure that they're good um, and make those constrained as well. So the, black, the lines are black, you're good to go. Now we're gonna actually start making the cross part, right? So what you wanna do, you know, I would just say, just go for it. Like you, there's probably better ways of doing this, but I think what I like to do I like to make my shape when it's sim when it's more simple shapes and I just like to snap it all into place but I definitely don't recommend that if you have more complex shapes you want to kind of you want to get it right the first time as you make it just to make things easier down the line but yeah so we got kind of across it's ugly but it's okay don't worry about it you guys we're gonna fix it um <laughs> let's click the check mark for the lines um we're, we're we're all good ready to go to the next step so what you can do now, select, and we kind of want this to be centered, right? So what you can do is hover over this line, click this mid, mid, uh, what's it called a midpoint on your line, right? It will hover and it'll show up for you. Shift, we're gonna click the construction line, and what you can do, coincident, snaps into place. It's great. Um, next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make all these lines the same because. You know, it's just easier. It looks nicer. We want a good kind of square cross, I guess, uh, proportional cross. So go ahead and just highlight using the shift key, all of your lines, click on them. And what you can do is click equal. Boom, they're all equal right away, right off the bat. Um, so now what you're gonna wanna do when you wanna set a specific length, you can now just click on one of your lines Let's check what the amount was because I don't remember, 0.25, right? So now we're gonna do 0.25. And for me, it automatically does inches because I set my uh, SOLIDWORKS for that. But make sure to check your units. Okay, cool. So all of my lines are 25 now. Um, one last thing we need to do, because see, we have some blue lines. They're not, it's not fully defined. It's not fully legit as if you wanna think of it that way. I wanna make it lined up. I wanna set the place because otherwise, if we exit smart dimension, I can click around my sketch and look, it just moves around. I don't want it to move. I want it to be set in place. And the computer wants it to be set in place too. So what you can do, get out of smart dimension. Don't get stuck. If sometimes like you get stuck in smart dimension, just remember to exit it. And also remember to exit your sketch, sketch sometimes if you wanna move on to like a 3D mode kind of thing and start editing stuff in 3D. Um, but yeah, just let's see. So what we wanna do is click the midpoint of this line, shift to click your construction line and coincident, boom, everything's defined. Everything's in black. This is good, we like this. So now what we can do is click check to just you know finish off whatever you're doing. And yeah, look at that. We got a little cross on our 3D shape. So next step, we can just exit our sketch. Don't forget to do that. Nice. Now you can go to features because the next step that we wanna do is, right, we wanna cut the little cross in it and then we're done. So as mentioned earlier, extruded cut. And right away, it kind of already knows what I wanna do because I have, always make sure you select which plane and which sketch that you're working on. So if I, so it sees that I'm already highlighted in the sketch too. I'm not working from the revolved. I'm not working from my initial sketch that it revolved. I'm working on this sketch. So you're gonna go to extrude a cut. And let's see how much we cut it into. So we wanna do 0.2. So then you're gonna go here. This is the distance that it cuts into your shape, 0.2. And then 
it already has a fine from the sketch plane blinds it kind of just you can change the direction it cuts but we don't want to do that we're good um but yeah we can just check and that's our screw and kind of going off of some things that quinn said earlier you can look at it from any perspective that you want you can also do from a top view if you want it's really nice you can also shade it differently so if i want it all in lines like the wireframe it's called. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> Don't mind me. I did say I get lost in SolidWorks a lot, so 3D can be hard. But once you, yeah, see, she's already going crazy. But yeah, that's basically the example of the screw. Does anyone have any questions, um, any confusion, something they want me to go over again? Any questions? It can be confusing at first. Hopefully that was very clear. It wasn't too fast, but you just gotta practice and play around with the program. I really suggest playing around with programs. No questions? Everyone got it the first time. Can't say the same. <laughs> Cool, okay, so I guess I can show you some little neat things just real quick since we have a few more minutes, but feel free in this time to just ask any questions. Um, and yeah, Quinn's comments, facts, yeah. But yeah, I can just show you some quick little tricks and feel free to just ask questions during this time if you come up with any. Um, I think the first thing it can show off right off the bat, you can just go back to your sketch, even though you finished your shape, right? We want to click on the cross sketch and you can rename your sketches. Edit. Um, let's say I want it to be bigger. So let's make it, honestly, let's just do point A. Let's see what happens. It's huge. Okay. So it's still defined. All the lines are black. We click check. We exit our sketch. And look, it automatically cut it because you already had that setting preset to your sketch. Yay. I think that's the only trick I can think of right now. Maybe we can show fill it too. Oh, yeah. Fill it. Okay. So you want to click fill it. It's right here. Click what type of fill you want. Items to fill it. What you're going to click is an edge, right? Because it kind of just makes everything smooth. So. Right now it's set at 0.1 radius. Let's just, that might be too much. Let's do this, yeah. And when we click check, boom, it's filleted. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Unless you y'all wanna see some homework problems from MAE 150, the CAD class. Not just CAD, but yeah, let me know. But yeah, that's the end of the tutorial and two more minutes until the workshop technically ends, but we will stick around if you have any questions or want to talk about anything. But yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to shoot them in the chat or say it out loud. And I hope you have a good rest of your week. And thanks to Quinn for helping a lot with this workshop and setting a lot of it up. Thank you. If you guys can see my screen, I just used a CAD program to print this today, so. This is a good practical example of the things you can do with the power of 3D modeling. This is a seven inch tall hyper HD gorilla. You can also make him smaller. This costs a lot of money. <laughs> do you mind saying how much it costs? I'm really curious about 3D printing costs or I guess how it's, much it was per ounce. The filament is not very much. Uh, dignity. Oh. Electricity. <laughs> oh. Mostly those two things. I think this in filament is like $8. And this is like a pound. Wow. Like he's, he's hefty. The real problem is this took like 50 hours to print.
Yes, we do have 3D printers on campus. I think if you go uh, into the makerspace, I haven't even been there, but if you go, is that what it's called? That doesn't seem right. It is? Okay. It's one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's this, uh, what's the name of the building that that's in? Makerspace Envision is in oh, the Envision. SME. Yes, SME, SME building, second floor. Second floor, SME. Go check it out. You don't have to like, you have to do a course to use the stuff in there, but you just go in there and ask the people at the desk how you do all that stuff because they'll help you out. It's awesome. They have a ton of printers, laser cutters, computers that are capable of CAD. If you've got a lemon OPC and it's, yeah, just a nice place. Soldering irons, all the stuff. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the recording for now. So if anyone has any questions or wants to stick around, feel free. But yeah, bye. Thanks, everyone.